Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and today's shout out goes to XD Itamar GT. He was first to say first to one of my recent videos, and thus wins his shout out, so congratulations. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here with a review of a neat new drone, the Matavish 3, also known as the L109 S. So, what is the L109 S? Well, it is a brushless folding, as you can see, folding. Uh, camera drone with GPS. Actually, you got to fold these front ones out first because of the leg extensions here. But let's unfold it to show you what it looks like. Unfold it. But uh, as mentioned, again, it is brushless motors. Uh, these brushless motors are brushless 1406 motors, uh, and uh, they should provide sufficient power for this little drone to lift off easily and, and do what it needs to do. But again, it has GPS inside. That means this can return to home and land on command, on loss of signal, and on low voltage. So, you know, for those uh, newer pilots who can't bring it back home visually, this will do it. You know, if you run into problems, just press the button, it comes back and lands on its own. Now, it's advertised with a 4K camera. Um, let's be serious, folks. In this price range, under $200 price range, you're not going to get a drone with a 4K camera yet these days it really this what this does is it's really produces 1080p video folks to your phone by the way there although there appears to be a sd card slot on the back of this do not attempt to put an sd card in there because this drone does not have an sd card reader or writer in it um, if you slide one in there you'll probably lose the card inside you'll have to open up the camera to get at it but uh, what it does have, this produce, or transmits via 802.11 AC Wi-Fi to your phone the video and photos, and then it is recorded directly to your phone. Now, I mentioned 802.11 AC Wi-Fi as usual. I, not everybody has 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. Before purchasing this drone, first confirm that your phone indeed has 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, or you will be very disappointed when you will not be able to properly use this drone. And the way to do that, folks, is you just Google search your phone model also along with the term 802.11 and see if 802.11 AC shows up in the results. Okay, we mentioned GPS. I forgot to mention this also has optical flow sensor on the belly. What this does is looks directly at the ground beneath the drone and maintains the drone's position automatically when you're not using the GPS. You can turn off the GPS and uh, use this mainly for indoor. If you want to fly this indoors, you've got a big enough room to fly this indoors. This will look at the ground and maintain the drone's position automatically. Return to home won't work when you use this, but uh, it will hold its position. Um, also, with the optical flow, it has also an altitude hold barometer inside here, a pressure sensor that will help maintain the drone's altitude by the pressure. Uh, let's see. Now, let's go back to the camera. A couple more things about the camera here. This came with a very thin protective film over the lens. You would not even notice it, folks. It, you know, it looked almost like the lens. So if... But when you get this, I recommend that you check to see if that film's still installed. It should be. And you scratch it off with your fingernail to get it off. Um, it, it's in the instructions to do such. Well, no, it's not in the instructions to do such. I saw it on an internet instruction for this drone from the company. <laughs> and then I looked closer, and sure enough, there was a film over the lens. So remove that film, or else you might get a slightly blurry picture from the drone. Uh, what else? Now, I mentioned it takes 1080p stills. Uh, it takes 1080p still photos, and it takes 720p video, uh, okay? That 720p video um, tells me that there possibly, since this has a, t it seems to have really a 1080p sensor since it's taking 1080p stills, and since it's uh, filming at 720p, there might be some image stabilization, and indeed this is uh, advertised with some type of anti-shake, electronic anti-shake technology. Now, I don't know what that is, folks. If it's electronic image stabilization, we'll find out today when we go fly this. But uh, the, what I, uh, you know, I did a flight out in front of my, my front yard here just to check it out, and I did not really see true image stabilization. Maybe that anti-shake is, I'm guessing, is intended to reduce jello effects. Okay, that's the main 
uh, thing for that anti shake is what I'm under the way I understand it at least. It also has an up down um, semi gimbal here that you can remote control this uh, lens to push it up or down using the controller. You now don't try to force this up or down by hand. You use the controller to adjust the angle of the camera. Okay. Now let's talk about the app since we were touching on uh, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. This is this uses the LYZR, LYZ RC app. Um, with that app, it gives it the functions of circle me, follow follow me, and waypoints. Okay, that's strictly done through the app. There is no buttons on this for circle me or follow me or waypoints. You need to use the app to do that. Um, but the app also gives you an option of a 50 times digital zoom. Um, that's pretty. Close. <laughs> That's a pretty powerful zoom. Okay, that tells me possibly maybe there is a 4K sensor, but you're not using that 4. You can't record the 4K, but you can use that for the zoom, to zoom in and still get a clear picture, and also uh, for the electronic image stabilization if there is such in this camera. But um, 50 times digital zoom. It also has gesture uh, photo capability where you can. Put up your fingers like so, and it'll take a photo. Or if you go look, put up your hand like so in front of the drone, it will start and stop video. You can do that with this. And it also has a music video capability, which I'm not going to demonstrate, but a lot of uh, the recent software uh, apps that come with these drones include it, where you can take your video and add music to it using the app. And finally, let's talk about the um, battery. I haven't mentioned the battery yet. Let's pop it out. Here you can see I can pull it back and down. Let me hold on, folks. I'm going to get a better grip on this to do it. There we go. This is the battery. It is a 11.1 volt, 20, no, 1600 milliamp per hour battery. Now, it's predicted to give this drone 25 minutes of flight time in hover. <laughs> Whenever you see the what they're talking about for flight time, it usually means in hover. Um... Realistically, realistic flying, I'm going to guess this is going to be around 10 to 12 minutes. We'll find out when we go flying today again uh, to find out what the realistic flight time is for forward flight. So let's plug that back in. It's back in the belly. I think I covered everything on the drone. Let's talk about the controller now. This is the controller. It is well labeled, but it is difficult to see the white insignia. You know, it, they used white uh, font. And it's really hard to see it against the silver background. But this button here is for rates. This button here is for return to home. With a quick press, you, the drone will come back and land. Um, if you press these for a long period, for three seconds, this side here starts the compass calibration. Since this is a GPS drone, you will need to do a compass calibration every time you fly it. It's very important. Every time you put a new battery in, you need to do a compass calibration. And you do that by holding this button down here, and that initiates it. I'll demonstrate in the field when, how to do it. Uh, this button here, if you need to do a calibration of the gyros, so you can get level flight using the optical flow sensor, you press and hold this button here. And this button, see, I can't even see these like this. Okay, <laughs> this button here is for uh, taking photos by a quick press and holding it down for three seconds you can uh, start and stop the video camera this button here is GPS you can turn GPS on and off by a quick press of this button here if you want to fly indoors just press that GPS button and it will turn it off these two buttons here are for raising and lowering the gimbal or the uh, camera lens using its electronic gimbal there and this button here is for automatic takeoff. Now, to do an automatic takeoff, you need to first start the motors. And you start the motors by either bringing the sticks down and out and holding them out for about one or two seconds. And the motors will start. And then you press that automatic takeoff. Down and in also does the same. We'll start the motors or stop the motors. And then you press the automatic takeoff or automatic landing button there. And this button here down in the lower right is for headless mode. This drone does have headless mode capability um, for doing panning shots. Um, if you want to do such, you press that button and enter headless mode. The drone or the um, controller uses three AA batteries, which I have inserted in here. Now it has these antennas, but these are fake antennas that we normally see on these lower end drones. They are indeed fake. They're just there for cosmetic reasons. Um, if you the real 
Now, people, a lot of people say these are phone holders. They are not phone holders, folks. They're just fake antennas. Here's the phone holder. The phone holder is on the belly of the controller. Pull it out, and then you slide your phone in there and hold your phone on the bottom of this controller. So, that's a Matavish 3. I forgot the one more thing I got to show you before we go flying. This is its carrying case. It comes with a very nice carrying case uh, to hold all the components. Nice web mesh on the top and uh, let's remove that and, and it holds the drone and the controller and uh, your any accessories in there like such and I also forgot to mention what comes in the box completely you get the app instruction manual in English and Chinese you get a user manual in English and Chinese you get a four spare sets of propellers along with uh, a, a little bag full of uh, additional components for the propellers and additional screws to install the propellers. Now you also get this controller, it's a 3S controller for 3S uh, balance charger uh, that you charge through a micro USB port or a USB port. I strongly recommend that you use a 2 amp wall charger, at least a 2 amp wall charger to charge your battery or, you're, or you will be waiting very many hours to charge that 1600 milliamp per hour battery. And that's it. That's what you get. So let's take this out into the field folks and see how it flies. Hope you enjoy this flight. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and we are at one of my favorite flying fields with a flight of the Matavish 3. Now, to start this up, first we've got to start the drone. And you hold that button down until you hear the ESCs chirp. Actually, quick press and a long press. Quick press, then a long press. ESG, ESCs are chirping. And then you turn on the transmitter and connect it. Now, it should automatically connect, and you should know it will be automatically connected when you see the voltage cycling between 12.5 and 3.8 volts the drones, battery power, and the remaining battery power and the controller. So now we know we are connected. Now once we're connected, the uh, next thing I need to do is connect to the Wi-Fi, folks. So hold on while I connect to the Wi-Fi and turn on the app. Okay, this is the LYZRC app available in Google Play and iTunes. Now, it has a list of different drones that you can select. Right now it has L108. That is not this drone. We want to select L109 uh, GPS. That is this drone, okay? And the next thing we want to hit is the control button. Not the quick start, but the control button. Second one down on the right. And that should bring this up. And they're saying we're in, we have sufficient satellites to fly in GPS. <laughs> That's what that Chinese is trying to say. So you hit cancel until it goes away. And we are ready to fly, folks. Okay, uh, before, actually, we are not ready to fly. We haven't done the uh, compass calibration. Now, remember, there's two ways of doing it. Or there's the do way to do the compass calibration is hold down the left button. Holding down the right button just does a, GP or a, a gyro calibration. We could do that. And the gyro calibration is completed. Okay. Now, the next thing we want to do is the compass calibration. Holding down the left button until you hear the beep. Now, the lights are rapidly flashing, as you can see there. And we are going to turn until we hear a beep. Rotate clockwise. Okay. Now we are ready to do the second part of the calibration. Right now the front legs, the red ones, are blinking. And we put the nose up and turn again until we hear another beep. That's still flashing. And if you don't hear a beep, those are still flashing. We're, okay, we're done. <laughs> second beep. No. Those are still flashing. Let's try nose down. Those have got us. There we go. Nose down did it. I guess I was wrong about nose up. Okay, now the lights are solid. All lights are solid. You've got red, red in the front and green in the back. Now that other beep you hear there should be sufficient satellites to fly. Let's check. Yeah, we have 12 satellites. We have sufficient satellites to fly. We see 12 there in the LCD screen and also 12 on the uh, app screen. Now start recording. We need to press the camera button. And where is that camera button on this upper left corner there? You hold it down until, until you hear a beep. And you know you're recording because the yellow uh, camera icon will be flashing. Okay, to start the motors, both, both sticks down and in, we're out. In works. And let's press the automatic takeoff button, holding it down. And we're going to check for stability. Looking for toilet bowl effect. I'm not seeing any, so it's nice and stable. Let me get in the camera, in front of the camera, and say, I like my shirt today, folks. Okay, that camera is nice, has quite a bit of zoom on it. But uh, there we go. There's my uh, K 
camera. Now let's point it down just a little bit. And that'll be the angle down button. Just a little bit, right there. Okay, now the first thing I want to do is put my glasses on because we're going to do a range test of this. And I want to be able to see it. So I'm going to turn the drone. And push forward and up. Go up higher and go forward. We'll go out halfway to the skate park, which is about 150 meters, right, right about there. I'm going to stop it right about there. What's the distance we're at? We are at uh, uh, 75 meters, and we still have connection. So going further out, pushing forward. I'm going to go with slow. I'm going to try to go slower, but go up a bit higher. Turn it to the left to head toward the skate park. Still have GPS. And I'm losing FPV signal right about there at a distance of 151 meters away. Okay, let's see if I can rotate. Okay, I got the signal back again. Okay, so I'm going to push forward again. Actually, let me raise the camera up a little bit. We might see a little bit of props, but I want to see more sky when we're going forward. Pushing forward again. And I seem to have lost the signal. Still, still have not regained it again. Wait a minute. I think I got it back again. So it gets real whiffy at about 150 meters, folks. Now keep in mind that we are recording to the phone via Wi-Fi. So each time I lose the signal, I'm losing the video, okay? So <laughs> we're losing video recording. It's, it gets real choppy. So, you know, even though this is advertised for 600 meters, the effective range is about 150. Uh, it seems to be about 150 here. I'm turning to the right now. Let's go to the other end of the field here. Pushing forward. Let's see if I can maintain signal. No, it gets choppy again as I go forward. Pushing forward again. I can still see the drone, but it gets real choppy. So, again, you know, the effective FPV range is only really about 150 meters, and you don't really want to fly out that far because you're not going to be able to record this video, okay? It's going to get real choppy. Now, let's do the return to home and landing, automatic return to home and landing. And I'm trying to find the button for that. Oh, there it is, upper right corner. Pressing it. And let's see how accurate its return to home and landing is from that distance there. It's climbing and coming back. And it comes back quite rapidly. I'm going to step off. We're going to see how close it is landing is. Okay, it's right above me. It's plopping itself there. Let's see what it do its descent. To a landing and we'll see how accurate its return to home is very slow descent <laughs> obviously trying to minimize vortex ring state wobbling <laughs> wobble of death they call that <laughs> going into the prop wash so that's why they come down real slow like this folks okay its landing is going to be about a beater off not too bad not too bad at all so Okay, let's put this back on the pad again and turn off return to home and landing. Again, return to home and landing is in the upper corner here. Turning it off. Okay, quick press. <laughs> okay, quick press turns that off. Okay, let's turn off the camera, uh, the recording, uh, by a quick press of the camera button, which is right there, or long press of the camera button. Make sure we got that recording. And maybe not. Doesn't want to stop recording. Okay, I'm going to use pressing the camera button down here to see if that stops recording. Okay, recording has stopped. Let's see if we can start that recording again. Long press on this. Okay, so right now the app does not want to record unless you use the app. So we're going to use the apps feature to record. But before that, we're going to get to the air. Take to the air. I'm going to do a manual takeoff this time. Throttle up. Come down a bit, get in the picture, because I want to take photos. How about a quick press? Is that a quick press one? Well, I'm going to press the camera button on the app. I don't know if it's recording. One more time. Quick press here. I don't know if that's recording or not, but how about a long press? We can start the camera again. Nope. So I'm going to have to hit the camera button. 
camera button on the app to start recording again. Now we're going to try follow me. Follow me feature. Let's, let's lower the angle of the camera. Down to about there. Right about there. Center of my position. And then select follow me. Let's see what it does, folks. Does it actually follow? Follow, 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 follow. Yeah. Went down a little bit more. And it's a little bit bumpy, but it's following. As you can see there. <laughs> Let's stop it right there. Stop the follow me. This time I'm going to go a little bit further away. Hopefully that will reduce the jiggling that we're seeing there because of a GPS error between my phone and the drone. Okay. There could be a big difference between the GPS where my phone is saying where I'm at and where the drone thinks I'm at. Okay, a little bit further. Follow again. Follow me is activated. Let's see what it does. Okay, you know what? It seems to have um, a Hobson style of follow me where it stays at a, a cardinal uh, compass position away from me. Right now it's south of my position and it doesn't move. Okay, it just stays south of your position while you're doing follow me. Let's see if it follows me forward now. Raise up the camera. And let's walk toward it. See how the follow me works walking toward it. So that's the follow me feature of this drone. Um, again, since it does not have stability, automatic stabilization, it's real jerky because the drone is jerking around a bit as it's doing this follow me. Let's go over this way now to the right. See if it still follows. And indeed it does. Okay, so that's follow me. So I'm going to stop that. Now we're going to bring it over toward me. Right about there. Actually, let's go a little bit farther down the field here. Because the next thing I want to do is circle position. And I don't want to hit these poles. Okay, right about there. Okay, so I've, I've lost the video. Hold on, I gotta stop the video recording. Let's come down a bit. And I've lost Wi-Fi signal, folks. So unfortunately, that's you know an issue with these Wi-Fi flyers. You can't lose Wi-Fi signal. Um, let's go back over to the pad. I'm gonna land it on the pad and then reconnect the Wi-Fi. So hold on, folks. Right about there. Pulling back. Cool, pulling back. And lowering its position. Close enough to that pad. Ooh, right on it. It's pretty good. <laughs> so hold on while I reconnect the Wi Fi, folks. Okay, it's a couple days later, folks. Um, I had trouble reconnecting to the, the Wi Fi of this particular drone the other day. Okay, now we got a sufficient satellite supply. But um, when I took it home, it seemed to work okay. So there might be a problem with the Wi-Fi module on this in that it, it may overheat. But we're back again. So let's, and I haven't recharged the battery. This is the same battery power as before. The reason being, I want to see what the total flight time is on this battery. So let's start the uh, um, camera again. Start recording. And starting the motors by down and out. And then giving it automatic takeoff. checking stability stability is good okay so the next thing I wanted to try the other day was circle me so let's go over the over this direction here first over the center of the field right about there plop it there go up a bit higher and we're gonna circ select circle position and we're gonna give it a radius this time let's come down a little lower actually a radius of about 10 meters 10 meters and then hit done and then confirm. Let's see what it does. It goes out 10 meters from that position where it was at, plops itself down, and does its circle. So there's a circle me. We didn't get to do this the other day. We're doing it today, though. <laughs> Let's let it do one or two circles just to show you what it can do. Circle position. And it works, it seems to work fine. And how's my battery pirates? 
about one third battery power right now. We're going to call them quits in circle position now. So we showed that work. Now the next thing I want to show working is waypoints. Will waypoints work? Now right now, let's select where we are. Center, I'm not in Kenya <laughs> or Ethiopia. Where does it say I'm at? That is wrong, folks. <laughs> so maybe I won't demonstrate that because obviously it doesn't jive with where we are here. It thinks the drone is in, in Africa and I am here. But let's hit the center position. And uh, no, that's not going to work, folks, unfortunately. So next thing I want to try, it sounds like the battery's getting low too. I haven't shown it yet. Let's stop the video recording right there. Bring it down a little lower. Right there. And take a photo. And take another photo. Get a little closer. I hope the photos are taking. One more. And let's try it using the uh, photo button on the, on the uh, controller itself. I think that took. And one more. Okay, now I'm going to start the video camera one more time. I'm hearing a helicopter, but I'm not seeing it. If it gets louder, I'm going to land. But I'm start, trying to start the camera using the button. Again, I tried using the controller. It does not seem to work with this. Okay, the next thing we can try is photo mode. GPS mode, battery is low. Uh, by using gesture control. I'm going to select gesture control. And go like this seeing if it works. How about the photo? Nah, I'm not seeing it working. Here, just my hand alone. Can you see that? No? Neither one of them seems to be working. Wait, wait, there we go. I don't know if it took a photo or what. <laughs> I think it took a photo. <laughs> so that was gesture control. Now finally, this is the last button in the center here. I don't know what it does. Let's press it. Okay, oh, that's the zoom. So let's, I'm going to step back a bit. Let's try this optical zoom. Zoom it in. <laughs> that's its zoom, folks. It's a, uh, not optical zoom, it's a digital zoom, folks. So, you know, all it's doing is zooming in. Can I pinch zoom it too? Yeah, you can use your, by pinching and unpinching, you can also zoom using this feature. Now, again, that beeping we're hearing is low battery. We're going to fly until it does a return to home on low battery or whatever it does with low battery. But I'm going to start the video recording one more time. If I can. Syncing up the cameras. And let's just go up a bit higher. Yeah, right up about there. And I'm just going to rotate the, the drone slowly just again to show you its camera. Again, its camera is recording via Wi-Fi only does not have an SD card so we're you know may see some stutter in the video some frames lost frames but going to slow rotate showing the camera and that's it so let's bring it back down again coming down coming down coming down and finally let's just try out it's how good of a flyer it is oh, oh that's the that seems to be the end of its ranger, 20 meters, looks like, from the takeoff point. It won't go any further away than 20 meters. Coming down a little lower. Just showing it, its flight ability. That's, is that its back speed? Let's, let's press the speed button. Two. Okay, it's, this is a high speed. Let's see how reactive it is at high speeds this is high rate on the drone maximum speed let's watch it go into the geofence okay there's its low battery return to home folks let's see what it does low battery return to home goes over to the pad where it took off from Plops itself there and does it descend? Yep, it's descending. So we'll see how close this return to home and landing is.
And there we go. That's its total flight time. Let me stop the recording. So that is the Metavish 3, folks. I've, I forgot to hit Bob is in to start Bob is in recording, I believe. We'll see if I did. But uh, yeah, it, it, it flies okay. But uh, again, it does not record to SD card. That's an issue there. And the other issue is that the again the Wi-Fi seems to cut out it had cut out of me when I was flying the other day and would not start up again so there might be some uh, Wi-Fi module overheat problems with this I don't know okay I don't know if other people have encountered that same issue or maybe I just got a defective one so that's the L109S Metavish 3 hope you enjoyed this flight this is Quadcopter 101 signing out Hi, Quadcopter101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks. <music>